How is everybody doing today? My name is Master Zero and welcome back to another reaction video. This time we are reacting to How to Move the Sun, Stellar Engines by In a Nutshell. Alright, so uh, it's been quite a while as far as like my channel goes, it has been quite a while since I've done an In A Nutshell video. I don't know why, but I guess a bunch of other stuff got in the way. Like, I started doing a Minecraft animation a lot, but I want to go back to In A Nutshell, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of you guys wanted me to react to it. Uh, the newest one, which this is the newest one, I hope this is the right one, but I think it is. Stellar Engine sounds familiar, but um, I'm super excited to go back to it. I can't wait to hear his amazing... I was gonna say succulent voice, <laughs> but that, that that makes sense, right? It totally makes sense. So without any further ado, oh, I, I don't know why you'd want to move the sun in the first place, but it should be a very, very interesting video regardless why. He's probably gonna tell us anyway. So so now, without any further ado, is, here is How to Move the Sun, Stellar Engines. Nothing in the universe is static. In the Milky Way, billions of stars orbit the galactic center. Some, like our Sun, are pretty consistent, keeping a distance of around 30,000 light years from the galactic center, completing an orbit every 230 million years. See, this I didn't know. This dance is not an orderly ballet, more like a skating rink filled with drunk toddlers. <laughs> this chaos drunk makes toddlers? the galaxy dangerous. Our solar neighborhood is constantly changing, with stars moving hundreds of kilometers every second. Only the vast distances between objects protect us from the dangers out there. But Fun. we might get unlucky in the future. At some point, we can encounter a star going supernova. Fun. A massive object passing by and showering Earth with asteroids. Very fun. If something like this were to happen, we would likely know thousands, if not millions of years in advance. Nice. But we still couldn't do much about it. Not nice. Unless we move our whole solar system out of the way. There it is. I knew he was going to explain why we'd want to move the sun. And he did it before the intro. <laughs> To move the solar system, we need a stellar engine, a megastructure used to steer a star oh, I like through the that. galaxy. It's the kind of thing that might be built by an advanced civilization with Dyson Sphere level technology that's thinking about their future millions of years ahead of I time. I know it had to do with the Dyson Sphere. But how do we possibly move the hundreds of thousands of objects in the solar system? The good news is we can ignore all of that. We okay. only need to move the sun, all the other stuff is glued to it by gravity, and we'll follow it wherever it decides to So I kind of figured, like if you move the sun, everything's gonna follow. about what a stellar engine might look like, and how it would work. I like, I like the one on the top. ...in our current understanding Aww. of physics, <laughs> that could be built in theory. The simplest kind of stellar engine is the Shkadov thruster, a giant mirror. Shkadov thruster. It works on the same principle as a rocket. Like rocket fuel, the photons released as solar radiation carry momentum. Not Smart. a lot, but a bit. For example, if an astronaut turned on a flashlight in space, it would push them backwards very, very slowly. Huh. A stellar engine will work a oh, no. the flashlight because the sun produces a lot of photons. The basic idea of the Shkadov thruster is to reflect up to half of the solar radiation to create thrust and slowly push the sun where we want it to go. How slow we talking, In though? order for the Shkadov thruster to work, it must be kept in the same place, not orbiting the sun. Although the sun's gravity will try to pull it in, it would be supported by radiation pressure, which props the mirror up. Huh. This means the but how do you make something that light, massive made of micron thin reflecting foil from materials like aluminium alloys? The mirror's shape is important too. Enveloping the sun in a giant spherical shell. I wish work, it was that easy, just that like a game drag and drop to the sun, heating it up and creating all sorts of unpleasant problems. Instead, Pretty though. we use a parabola, which sends most of the photons around the sun and in the same direction, which maximizes thrust. To prevent accidentally Just burning maximize or thrust. With too much or too little oh. sunlight, the only safe place to build a Shkadov thruster is over the sun's poles. This means we can only move the sun vertically in the plane of the solar system and one direction in the Milky Way, which limits our travel options a bit. But that is basically it. 
For a civilization capable of building a Dyson Sphere, this is a relatively simple endeavor. Yeah, but we Not haven't even gotten there yet. Just very Whoa, that's build. a lot of pop culture references. At full throttle, the solar system could probably be moved by about 100 light years over 230 million years. Over a few billion that's a years, really it long time. complete control over the sun's orbit in the galaxy. But in the short term, this might not be fast enough to dodge a deadly supernova. That's why <laughs> we thought we could do better. So Go for we it. Asked our astro Love that scotch friend, tape holding everything together. Design a faster stellar engine for this video. He did, and wrote a paper about it that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. Nice. You can find it in our sources document. We're going to call our new stellar engine the Kaplan Thruster. Oh, thought it was going to be Death like Star. A traditional rocket. Shoot exhaust one way to push yourself the other. It's a large space station platform powered by a Dyson sphere that gathers matter from the sun to power nuclear fusion. All right. It shoots out a very fast jet of particles. Use what you're trying to move. The speed of light it's out efficient. Of the solar system. A second jet pushes the sun along like a tugboat. Huh. The Kaplan thruster requires a lot of fuel, millions of tons per second. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt. To gather this fuel, the our thruster a massive uses amount of energy. Large electromagnetic fields to funnel hydrogen and helium from the solar wind into the engine. Pretty smart. The solar wind alone doesn't provide enough fuel, though. And that's where the Dyson sphere comes in. Using its power, sunlight is awesome. can be refocused like to the surface. It's like a previous of the sun. knowledge from a this previous video goes into this one. I really, really of enjoy that. Of mass off the sun. This mass can be collected and separated into hydrogen and helium. The helium is burned explosively in thermonuclear explosively. fusion reactors. A jet of radioactive oxygen at a temperature of nearly a billion degrees is exposed, and becomes our primary source of propulsion from our stellar engine. Maybe Star Wars to would have to do with it somewhere. From just crashing into the sun, it needs to balance itself. To do this, just, yeah, <laughs> right into the electromagnetic sun. fields using particle accelerators and shoot a jet back at the sun. This balances the thruster and transfers the thrust of our engine back to the sun. In as little as a million years, this engine can move the sun by 50 light years, more than enough to dodge a supernova. Nice. At full throttle, the solar Still system a really long time, be completely though. redirected in its galactic I mean, you're moving the entirety of the years. solar system, so but wait, it's going to take a while. Use up the sun this way. Fortunately, the sun is so massive that even billions of tons of material will barely scratch the surface. Wow. In fact, this megastructure will I knew the sun was huge, but dang. our sun's life, since lower mass stars burn slower, keeping the solar system inhabitable for many more billions of years. With a Kaplan thruster, we could turn the entire solar system into our spaceship. For example, That's so cool. backwards in the galaxy and colonizing hundreds or thousands of stars as we pass by them. That's cool. It may even but how are they going to get back? Escape the galaxy entirely and expand beyond the Milky Way. Into Stella the unknown, as Elsa kind says. Of machines built by civilizations thinking not in terms of years or decades. That's supposed to be the bird face. Since we know that our sun will die one day, a stellar engine could allow the far future descendants of humans to travel to other stars without ever having to venture into the terrifying dark abyss it's of pretty cool. interstellar space. Pretty cool. Until we build a stellar engine, we're adrift and subject to the whims of the galactic sea. We Which may is not very, very scary. Us. Maybe our descendants will set sail and become an interstellar species for Ooh. millions of years to come. This was our last video for the year 2019 of the e human era. I was a little late, what sorry. A it was. So much stuff happened everywhere. Dude, for There's real, so it was an amazing... People. As far as in a nutshell videos go, it was an amazing year. Imaginary, but they help us to cut our lives into pieces that our brains can handle. We're leaving 2019 behind with a weird mixture of disillusion and hope. The world is screwed up. Yes. But we can fix it. In a few Hopefully. days, this year will be over, and we all get to try again. Thank you for watching our videos and for sticking around for so many years. See you all in 2020. I'm already there, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's an awesome poster. I love everything he makes. It's so cool.
But all right, that was a very insightful video. Like like all of his videos, I love them so much. And they're just really, really cool. And like I said in this video, like I love how knowledge from a different video that I watched, the Dyson Sphere, I believe, already went brain dead. But it ties in into this one. And it's like, okay, well, since we did a video on this, we're just going to tell you that it, that what it is that we're saying in this video and you should have the knowledge from the previous video to understand what it is without us actually going into depth and explaining it again but i really really enjoy that like stuff in the past coming back to help i, I really enjoy that i don't know why i enjoy it so much but i really like it it's really cool i guess it's kind of like a uh to make sure you were paying attention kind of thing but I really, really like it. It's really cool. But, like, <laughs> the very beginning of this episode, I was like, why Why do we need to move the sun? But right before the intro, he explained it, why we need to move the sun. Or, like, not need, but, like, we have the opportunity to if the threat arises where we do need to move it. And that's always a good thing, to be prepared. But, like, stuff like this, you got to think about every little detail. Like, it's just... It's not just, oh, let's move the sun. I mean, yeah, it's a YouTube video, and, like, you could say that in a YouTube video, and it's like, yeah, we could totally do it. But, uh, like, in, to put it into real-world aspects, it, it's hard. It's very hard. But this video is very insightful. I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like down below because it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos like this one. So with that said, I have been Master Zero. Y'all guys have been fantastic, and I will see y'all in the next episode. Later days!